Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Rig on Wheels show featuring MVT. This is the first ever driver recruitment show, and I am your host, Camille E. Gaines, um, and I'm the CEO of Rig on Wheels. And of course, with me is my favorite VP of recruitment at Masilla Valley, um, and, you know, MVT. We call him Pearson, but his mama call him Robert Pearson. So <laughs> we are your ultimate destination for truck driving industry news, hot jobs, all type of news. Okay, not just, um, well, it's industry news, but sometimes it's a lot broader than that. So let's definitely make history together. Pearson, what did you want to say? Oh, we got a lot to cover in the news here. We can cover it. I know we've been talking a lot about what's been going on in the House of Representatives, not having a Speaker of the House. That's now behind us. We have a Speaker of the House. Now we can deal with the incoming debt ceiling crisis that's going to hit in about two weeks. Uh, so for the next week, we can be blissfully ignorant and uh, pretend nothing's going on. And then a week from now, we'll see all the talking heads on all the various news stations or on the uh, satellite radio losing their minds. Yes, yes, yes. All it's well. I like to see that at least we got a a functioning government again, pretending at least, and then <laughs> we start complaining again. But I was scared for a second. Like, what is going on? This is very disorganized. But um, at least we got that um, happening. Now, I know you was talking about the unions. They seem to at least now be getting along with the Ford. And so did you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. The UAW has a tentative deal with uh, Ford that's going to be now voted on by the Teamsters. Uh, GM appears to have reached an agreement with the UAW. The one that we're watching closest in the trucking industry continues to be the negotiations between Mac and the UAW, uh, with Mac, of course, being a big supplier of Class 8 trucks, what most of our uh, viewing audience would be driving at this very moment. Uh, they still have no deal. So that's going to be something to watch very closely here. And I, I can tell you that the other OEMs are watching it very closely to see how this plays out. Uh, it will definitely impact everybody from drivers to companies to OEMs. So it's going to be interesting watching that out. We appear to be seeing progress and the UAW appears that they're going to be negotiating, but I, I don't know that we're too far apart with Mac. We're still sitting with no deal and this has been dragging on for a couple months at this point. So hopefully we have some resolution on it soon, but I'm not optimistic on that. Um, we'll have to play that out. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a domino effect. It's, it's going to, this is definitely going to be a domino effect. It's not going to be pretty. It's yep. definitely going to be a no effect. Everybody want to uh, play hardball, and that is not good. Now, what I saw over the weekend is how China is start trying to pick a fight uh, with the Philippines just because they can. And I know you're not worried about it, but it's just an irritant at the moment. Yeah. World affairs are going to be interesting over the next decade. Uh, China and Russia in particular are those two world powers um, that are aging populations where the older individuals now far outnumber the younger individuals. That's scary because generally speaking, life progresses on, people are living to an older age, and so you have countries that aren't able to support a middle class or their version of a middle class. So 10 years from now, China and Russia are probably going to be viewed very differently than they are today. So in a lot of ways, any 
China or Russian ambitions. They kind of have to go for now because I don't know that they would be able to do so 10 years from now. It's why Russia invaded Ukraine in the time frame that they did. Uh, and it's why China is starting to really, you know, what's going on in Ukraine is a proxy war for China. They definitely are watching what's happening in Ukraine. And it's interesting that they kind of make threats towards the Philippines because really they want to make threats towards the ROC, which is the acting government in Taiwan. Uh, yeah. But the People's, the, the, the People's Republic has not got the intestinal fortitude to do that. So the Philippines is kind of that secondary option. I don't think China has the military power and I don't think they have the appetite to actually follow through on it. But when countries are desperate, just like people, they do desperate things. And so it's one of those yeah. things that we'll have to watch on this. But one of the things to keep in mind is over the next decade, we're going to see a lot of this stuff. And and the next 10 years is going to change dramatically as we move away from more of a globalized economy into one that's not quite isolationist. But you will see NAFTA and Canada, the U.S. and Mexico become much more heavily reliant on each other. Uh, you're also yeah. seeing countries... You're also seeing countries like India, as an example, where traditionally India would be a call center place, but now you're seeing a lot of technology move over to India that pre-COVID you wouldn't have seen. I mean, most people were not talking about India as being a technology powerhouse, but China and Russia are not really places you want to invest long-term. It's hard to do business there without intellectual property violations. Um, and so you're seeing places like India, Mexico in particular, the you know, we, we transport about 400 loads a day across the border over the U.S.-Mexican border uh, with our partner carriers down in Mexico, as well as what we do here in El Paso. Um, a lot of what was being done in China is now done on the U.S.-Mexico border when uh, Steve Mnuchin and Donald Trump under their administration um, basically created NAFTA too and exacerbated yeah. the pace of NAFTA from the mid-90s. So the next 10 years is going to be really wild. And I'm sure you have people that are listed as geopolitical experts that probably if you ask them gun to their head, what's it going to be like 10 years from now? They're going to look at you and, I don't know. And that's going to be their expertise on the subject. But I, I see China and Russia probably making a lot of noise over the next five to 10 years. They have to. I mean, it's better. And when you think about it, it's definitely better to let's say, let's go ahead and start war, start chaos so we can have more power now because they're not stupid. They know in 10 years or so they not they won't be able to. So well, the, the, U, the, U, the U.S. bought a lot of allies post-World War II. Post-World mm -hmm. War II, our, our, our thing was is that People forget pre-World War II, being able to ship stuff across oceans was not common. You had piracy. You had a bunch of issues. Shipping right. stuff from China to the U.S. did not happen. And after World War II, the U.S. became the naval expert of the, of the world. And part of that trade-off was, hey, we're going up against communism. If you want to join our side, we will provide you access to the world's oceans and we will protect shipments going around the world. It's what led into globalization. The U.S. led that charge through the Navy. As more and more moves away from China and comes over into Mexico and becomes much more North American base, the uh, appetite of the U.S. Navy to be that world power on the seas becomes less and less and less. China has and Russia has some very tough decisions to make in a world where they may not have the safety net of the U.S. providing that service for them anymore, they're going to need to be bold, stick their chest out, and make a stand. You're going to see a lot of that over the next 10 years uh, as we move away from the Britain model and move more towards not quite isolationist, but where everything's more North American based. Yeah, I definitely agree with all of that. Um, so it's going to be, we're going to have to look at it and actually that is actually going to hit our industry a lot so whether it's peace or war we have a lot to do with it yep <laughs> a lot absolutely and, it. and i will say that uh you will see over the next 10 years uh i, I watch uh, peter zion who's a, a pretty uh intelligent and well-read uh, geopolitical expert he will tell you you know if you look i-35 I-35 is that big part of the NAFTA piece of it, that if you're a driver in particular, the long-term venture being a driver 
for the next 10 years. I-35, honestly, is probably a more valuable area to live than a place like Chicago or traditionally the Port of Los Angeles, where a lot of people always wanted to live out of those for freight opportunities. I-35 appears to be where there's just more growth opportunity over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, in particular, uh, Houston's already a very globalized city. Yeah. Dallas-Fort Worth has a lot of that too. Um, and when you combine that fact with Texas has a rich and robust energy sector that is not as reliant on other people's energy services as other states in the country. Um, Texas I-35 has a very bright future as more and more of this stuff moves back into North America and in particular out of Mexico. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. So where do you see us 10 years from now when it comes to recruiting? How do you see like a huge change? I see this um, being, so I, I think we get very scared of automated trucks. And I hear that term a lot, AI, autonomous trucks. When I'm on an airplane, I've had numerous people as you talk and we talk about what our jobs, they go, boy, it feels like you're hiring yourself out of a job. I am not worried about that at all. We're going to need right. truck drivers 10, 20, 30 years from now. The nature of the truck driver job will change dramatically. Um, if you look at an airline pilot, that airline mm -hmm. pilot is more important than ever before. You have American Airlines frantically trying to hire 4,000 pilots this year. Um, you and your that American pilot, <laughs> well, the, the, we have a relationship. We've met. But so they're, they're trying to hire the 4,000 pilots over the next 12 months. That's a tall task. That pilot only flies 20% of the time. They take care of the takeoff, they take care of the landing, communications with flight, air traffic control. Um, they're the subject matter expert though. That pilot's really intelligent. So if that pilot flies a Boeing 737, they know that plane, they know the rules, the regulations, what to do when things go wrong, um, how to look up information quickly. That truck driver is a subject matter expert. They are not a steering wheel holder. Okay. They they're not a lumper that's there to run your warehouse for you. That truck driver is the subject matter expert behind the wheel that understands the 80,000 pounds they're going down the road with, how to operate safely, the customer service end of it. That becomes more important over the next 10 years. So as more stuff becomes automated, look, there may come a day where a driver literally does not sit there holding the steering wheel, but sits more back like this and observes. But that driver is an integral part of that truck still going down the road. If anything, it becomes more of a almost a quasi IT position or operations position where they're an expert. So if I'm saying I'm in a international pro star or a Freightliner Cascadia, I'm probably expected to know that truck almost as much as a mechanic would. Um, and that's the value proposition that a driver brings 10, 20 years down the road from now. So I see the position becoming more high paying. I see the position becoming more in demand. Uh, we have numerous states that the largest profession is truck driver. I don't see that going away. I see it being much more based out of the state of Texas compared to other places like New York or California. But I don't see the demand going down at all. So if I'm trying to think of what I want to do for a living for the next 10 years, I am not going to hire myself out of a job. I promise you. That's what I say all the time. We're still going to need truck drivers. It's the the way the, the truck driver, the evolution is going to be different. So what they're going to be doing is different. They're, they're still going to be truck driving. Um, oh, yeah. But it's like with any other thing, like a machine operator. A machine operator today is still a machine operator, but what they did 30 years ago was different. But they're well, and, still and a machine operator. And, and I tell my own kids this, college may be right for you. If you're going to be a doctor, if you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to college. Let me be real clear on that. There, I do not <laughs> want my doctor going to a community college for two years. I want them to have the full eight years of it. With that said, <laughs> if you're going to college to major in philosophy, you're wasting right. your money. Um, and you're not going to ask a truck driver to then pay off somebody else's student loan. 
The truck driver has no obligation to pay off that student loan for somebody else. So there's a huge swath that have no business going to college, but they do have uh, some potential by going to a secondary school. Uh, mm -hmm. Your pipe fitters, electricians, welders, plumbers, truck drivers, those are not going to become less valuable. If anything, those will continue to gain value. At this moment, there's 3.8 million jobs in this country that require a secondary education that's not college that pays more than the household income after a year of experience. Truck drivers are one of those. That's, that's going to become more so the case. And so, like I said, there's certain professions you absolutely need to go to school and college is a very valuable thing. I do not want my tax preparer, you know, getting a GED and going, I'm ready to do your taxes. With that said, if you're a truck driver, I'd much rather go to a truck driving school for four weeks than to go get a four-year degree, rack up $100,000 in debt, and then at 42 years of age go, boy, being a truck driver would have been better. Because at that point, you just made a very expensive career decision 20 years too late. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Skilled labor is um, very important. So if you're wanting to, I say that all the time, it's just education. So secondary education. So whether that be college or if you're talking about skilled labor, either way. Um, but yeah, there's no reason to go into debt for student loans if you know that those are not the positions that you want. It's a different time. You don't need to. And truck driving is not going away. It's just going to be evolutionized. So it's going to look different. That's why we talk about professional drivers so much. Yep. It's now more than ever. We don't need steering wheel holders. We need people that know how to communicate um, and things. You know, you don't want somebody going to your shipper or what have you, and they don't know how to communicate. It's just Look, like a pilot. The, the, the drug clearinghouse got rid of about 150,000 people over the last two years that you, yeah. me, and everybody on the road that's a professional don't want. We don't need them. They're a part of the industry that good riddance. Have good luck to you in your next endeavors. Because if you're one of the 3 million people that are still in some various form of the transportation industry with the CDL, you're valuable. You don't want those 150,000 people giving you a bad name and essentially just taking up space. For the rest of us still here, we have stuff to do. We have money to make and some opportunities here. So that's the thing is there's a difference between a really good truck driver and somebody that's, eh, it is what it is. I'll get there with the load when I get there. It's so funny that you bring that up. That's what I want. I want truck drivers to be looked at with the same respectability as a pilot. Mm -hmm. And realistically, and I think that, that doing drugs. It, it, it's one of the silver linings from the pandemic that I enjoyed. Uh, the pandemic and the supply chain disrupt you, disruptions gave a lot of people that never gave much thought to the truck driver going down the road as they passed them. Uh, they didn't really think about any of just some trucker going down the road that might honk their horn at you. Um, yeah. The pandemic forced the national discussion of the value of a truck driver. Um, look, I would not go back to 2020 for anything, but it's one of the <laughs> silver linings of that year is it forced people that uh, had no reason to think about the truck driver to have a real quick wake up call of the value of what a good truck driver means. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So Kayla, let's go to our first commercial and then I want to come and immediately jump into our hot jobs. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Okay, so we're going to jump right into our hot jobs. We're going to go into Division um, 400 and talk about our Nashville, Tennessee with the not-so-good food. <laughs> Somebody was talking to me about <laughs> some um, at BCB, actually. Um, Bryce, she going there, uh, and I said, yeah, everything good except the food. Um, so let's talk about it there. Not the food. Uh, the well, you're bury as we go into this job, you're burying me here. This ain't good. Um, <laughs> hey, with that said, yeah, we, we have uh, Division 400 out there. Um, we've had it for a while. We've talked about it for a while. You're going to go up to the Northeast, Central Pennsylvania, middle to upstate New York. You're not really going to have to worry about going into New York City, New England. That part of the map does not apply to us. We don't go up there. I'm sure they're fine folks, but if you're anything like me, you don't like driving up in New England anytime you can avoid it. Uh, pays about ninety dollars to $95,000 a year. You're home weekly. Uh, really good opportunities with uh, a lot of drop and hook. All of it's no touch. None requires endorsements. And most of these customers we've had out there, we've had going on years upon years upon years. So these are customers that know our trucks, get excited when we come into their shipping uh, facilities. They've seen us before. And so if you live out of the greater Nashville area within 100 miles of Nashville, orientation would take place in Nashville. So you wouldn't have to go far for orientation. It's about a two day, two and a half day orientation you're in a truck and you're making money quickly. We have loads as soon as you come out of orientation, that load is waiting for you and you're ready to go. Uh, so again, that's Division 400. When you talk to your recruiter, tell them, I'm interested in Division 400. We also have some other opportunities that are more centrally located around the middle of state in Nashville as well, if that's not a fit for you. But Division 400 is definitely one. I could use 10 to 12 people on that tomorrow. Well, that's good. So if you're one of those 10 to 12, definitely give us a call ASAP at 281-968-3100. 281-968-3100. Now, let's talk Division 200 because I know we need yeah. six people ASAP on that. One. Yeah. We run a nice division, uh, kind of a triangle. So if you live in El Paso, you're going to go from El Paso to Southern California up to Denver, back down to El Paso, do a 34-hour reset, and do the whole process over again. You're going to do that lane over and over and over. This is what we'd call one of those engineered lanes, which I'm a bigger fan of than when I hear the word dedicated. Dedicated means that you're one particular customer. The problem when you get that job is, as a driver, what if you don't like that customer? That's the job. So if you go and work for XYZ Trucking and you're on a dedicated account, and they work for Sarah's flower stand. And you get there and Sarah's people aren't very nice and they always do live loads and the freight takes a while. That's the job. There is no going out of it. It's a dedicated account. With this, it's an engineered lane. So this engineered lane from El Paso to Southern California to Denver back down to El Paso really made up about 18 different customers. So if you don't like Sarah's flower stand as an example, well, there's 17 other customers. It's it's much more than that, but you get the same routine running lanes. You get them very familiar with the running lanes. Top pays at 60 cents a mile on it. Most of those people are making about 15, 1600 bucks a week. And you're home every four to four and a half days, depending on weather and condition. And this is trucking. Things are not always going to go as planned, but you're going to be consistently at that pay range. Over the course of the year, you end up making about eighty-five dollars to $95,000 running pretty good stuff, getting home every four days for another reset. The nice thing is if you have family in El Paso, you know you can tell them, I'll see you in four days, and it has meaning behind it because you aren't delving anyplace else. Additionally, it's beautiful scenery. Uh, if you ever do that trip, El Paso to Southern California, up to Denver and back down again, you will see unique topography. You'll also get good fuel economy on that running lane that in particular is going to help you with our fuel uh uh, our fuel savings bonus that we do every quarter that we'll talk about later on in the episode here. Uh, so Division uh, 200's uh, definitely an opportunity there for us as well. Okay, and let's talk teams. Like, I know we got opportunities with a lot of divisions with teams, but which division did you want to concentrate on? 
Uh, probably Division 110. And we have some opportunities out of El Paso, uh, Albuquerque, Dallas, Fort Worth in particular with Division 110. A lot of Southern runs coast to coast. You're going to see Southern California, a lot of I 20, I 40 going back across the country occasionally you may pop up to portland but most of the time you're going to be sticking south of the mason dixie line uh so it's a lot of opportunity there where your average driver is making about seventeen hundred dollars a week getting home every week uh it's a good thing that if look if you live in albuquerque el paso or dfw it could be that you want to run with your spouse it could be that you have a brother or sister that you want to run with or it could be your best friend from high school but if we team up, there's a lot of opportunity there to still get you weekly home time, but as a team, make thirty-four to thirty-six hundred dollars a week. Um, so again, that would be Division One Ten. Again, no dro a lot of drop and hook, no touch freight, no endorsements required on that end. Um, and you're going to be sticking to the warmer part. So as we come into the winter months. Uh, you're going to not be having to worry so much about um, going through blizzards or hitting the Great Lakes states or the Northeast. You're going to be able to stay in an attractive part of the country that you're going to be able to put those miles in. Okay, good. So that's all for our hot jobs. So if you are looking for any of those jobs or any jobs at all, definitely give us a call at 281 nine six eight thirty one hundred pearson did you have any other jobs because you look in yeah, well, I, I'd say geography-wise, we still have a lot of opportunities spread out here. So I tell anybody, look, if, if you live in places like Salt Lake City, um, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, El Paso, um, maybe you live out of Houston or Laredo, San Antonio, Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, Memphis, Nashville, Louisville, or Jacksonville. I may not yeah. have listed out the job that sounds just right for you, but I have opportunities in all those other markets that are really specialized, more of an engineered lane. So my suggestion would be if you live in those markets, give a phone call and get into that detailed discussion with a recruiter about what you're looking for. Something tells me that we either have that opportunity available to you or your recruiter there at Rig on Wheels may be able to look at the opportunities based off of what your needs and wants are. And I would hope that it's with Team MVT, but if it's not, they'll at least be able to have that conversation go, yeah. you work great with XYZ Trucking. It's no MVT, but XY Trucking is a good number too. Right. If it's no MVT, we'll still try to get you placed. So, Kayla, yeah. go ahead and put that magical number back, back up there, 281-968-3100. So what I do want to do is go to commercial. When we come back, I know we're heading into the winter months. So I want to go over a few tips um, that we can give to the drivers, um, even the vets, just as a reminder. And then for your drivers with uh, your less experience, especially drivers that haven't really driven yet in winter months, um, even if you aren't driving in the blizzard, but it might be windy. Like right now it's cold in Houston. So even if it's not snow, just because it's cold, that means the roads are slippery. Just cause of that, literally. The ro roads are more slippery than they were yesterday. Um, yep. So go to commercial and then we'll be back in two and two. Be very realistic when you come into this industry because for none of us, even behind the desk, it's not a nine to five at all. Yep. You know, I ask my kids, I'm up at two in the morning, working almost every day. Power. Realize your power. Finding out myself. Finding out myself. Okay, y'all, welcome, welcome back. So we are going into the segment and we're gonna talk about safety. Safety is such a big deal. We want you to make it back home to your families. We want 
other families that are out on the road with you to make it um, back home um, as well. So some other safety tips, and I know in the last segment, like Pearson, you was talking about like blizzards and things like that, especially like if you in Salt Lake, all of that, where I'm from, Chicago, if you talk about New York, Jersey, Minnesota, God, Jesus, Michigan. But in Houston, Texas, you know, like yesterday on Monday, today, it's cold. So with it being cold, that literally means it's more slick on the road. Or if you are in Houston, Dallas has been raining for days. So even if you have a little drizzle, you add that, you got people with the oil that's slick um, and you have more slick conditions. So you have the obvious being more distant. Well, first talk about your Smith system because I know you're right on the edge of your seat. Everybody well, yeah, the Smith... Well, the Smith system is a, a nice uh, process that we have here that basically talks about defensive driving, how to predict what the four wheelers are going to do on the road with you. So if you're going down the interstate, predicting, hey, there's an opportunity that the four wheeler to my left here may try to cross three lanes of traffic. How would I adjust if they did that unexpectedly with no signal? You're not going to be able to protect yourself 100% of the time, but as a professional driver, you have to be in preparation for the unexpected to take place. The Smith system gets into a lot of that of understanding predictive analytics. What would I do if this happened, this happened, this happened? Defensive driving is definitely not the same as ma and pa taking a ride down to the Walmart. You're prepared for the bad things to happen. That's number one. It's offered to any of our drivers. It's a good process to take. And I will also say this, when you take the Smith system, one of the added perks is you save money on your auto insurance because you're able to show that and your auto insurance most of the time will give you a discount on that. So it's not just yeah. about being safe. You also save a little money in the process. And that's why a number of employees here have taken that class because they can save money on their auto insurance. With that said, being that predictive analytics and understanding, hey, I want to avoid the worst possible scenario to happen becomes really important. Defensive driving applies in all times of year, but as we get into the winter months, it adds some variables in there. How would you adjust your driving behavior based if people did the unpredictable things on the road when you include the weather that you're going to have to face? The other part of this Beyond Smith system, though, that I, I would definitely say is speed. No reason to be flying down the road, especially once the weather becomes inclement. It's an obvious thing, but normally the people that roll over their truck or slide in and get part of an 80-car pile up, you're going too fast for conditions. Just because the speed limit's 65, when it's raining, that speed limit being 65 no longer matters. So it's adjusting your speed. Are you in control of your vehicle that if you had to, you could stop effectively? The other part yeah. of that equation is recognizing it is unsafe to drive. So as an example, you may have a full load and the wind, you're getting side winds at 25 miles an hour, but the load's heavy, you're fine. But now tomorrow you go on that same stretch and you're getting 35 to 40 mile an hour gusts from the side and you're running empty. Those are two very different environments. You no longer have the advantage of having 36 to 48,000 pounds in your trailer. You are now literally a wind blocker because you have a broad side of the truck that's being hit by that side impact. You're prone to roll over. If it is unsafe to operate the vehicle, I know it is hard. We all get miles equal dollars. I understand the saying, and your time is money. You cannot come back from a rollover, God forbid, a death. Stop, pull to the side of the road, inform your dispatcher or your fleet manager, I am unable to continue due to weather conditions so that the customer can have that communicated to them. Let us deal with the customer that might not understand your challenges. Let us deal with the customer that's sitting there going, oh, no, we got to have the load. Let us deal with that. You're the professional on the road. You get visibility into the conditions that we do not. Do not be afraid to have that conversation of, it is not safe for me to operate this vehicle down the road. We'll look at it together, but we'd much rather have you get there with the load intact than have an issue on the side of I-10 
and have environmental cleanup taking place and God forbid a medical emergency because you said, I just thought I could do it. A rollover is a rollover. A death is a death. There's no getting around it, and it's hard to come back from it at this moment. Jackknife, the same thing. Watch your speed and recognize it is unsafe to operate this motor vehicle down the road at this time. And then another one that we don't really talk about as much. I, I don't think I've heard anybody really talk about this, um, but I know you brought up making sure that you stay in control of – you know, your 18 wheeler. And due to the fact that we have mainly automatic trucks on the road now, cruise control. When you're dealing with slippery, you do not have your cruise, cruise control on because at that point you will not be in control of your steering wheel when you have cruise control on. Yep. Um, so that is another big no no. Um, I, had a vet i was talking to him earlier and he was talking about that and I'm, and i'm like of course because when i'm in my car i wouldn't do that and he was talking about it just casually talking about it but that's not something that a driver uh that doesn't have a lot of experience would even probably think about especially if they were trained on an automatic because they are not used to the differences between the different trucks. So don't have your um, cruise control on. Also, go and be really, really careful on your exit ramps. Remember that your exit ramps are going to be your most iciest or your most slick surfaces are going to be your exit ramps. Another thing is as a truck driver, um, each state, forget the state, each city or county, the way that they take care of the roles are going to be different. Some salt, some sand, some do neither one. Uh, when it comes to um, snow and things like that. So you have to be mindful of that, those type of conditions and the abruptness. When it, com when it comes to that, you will see the difference. Oh, this politician or this county does this and this one doesn't um, do that at all. Those are the ones that I really jotted down um, that I no, I don't hear anybody talking about that much, but we hear on the telephone that actually rule drivers out as far as us being able to put with the company. It'll be things like that, they'll say. The yeah. other thing I will tell the other thing I will tell anybody though in the winter months in particular, though you could really apply this to any time of the year, bring bring supplies with you. So if you were to get into a spot, let's say a power line happened or a tree fell down and you're stuck in a huge amount of traffic for the next two days because a major weather event took place and you're on I-40 going across to Oklahoma, some 80 car pileup happened and you're now stuck for the next two days, cannot move, can't back out, can't operate. Would you be able to survive on the truck? And what I mean by that is, do you have food? Do you have trail mix? Do you have a blanket? Do you have a change of clothes? Do you have uh, water, importantly, and liquids available? Are you able to survive in the truck where you may not be able to go someplace for the next two days? It concerns me that if you look at most drivers, they do not. They have enough supplies to the next truck stop. A, it's not a financial, op, uh, a financial idea that you want to have to where you're living off the truck stops. And B, if you get into that spot, and it does happen, uh, it could be because of fuel issues in Louisiana it happened last year. We had the power outages in Texas that caused these backups last year. Are you prepared for two days in the truck where the truck is stalled out someplace and you're just stuck? Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen to you and you don't deal with that. But if you do have to deal with that, having that supply kit in your truck is a lifesaver and in particular, can mean that your experience in that two-day period, which is already going to sink, is going to be much more uh, different than the person that's simply not prepared. 
That's really good. I like that um, that you said that canned food. It just take us back to when we were, you know, what grammar school or whatever. How our yep. parents would have canned food and things like that in the cupboard to make sure, in case of emergency outages or whatever, we were able to eat in the hand can opener instead of the electric yep. one. Yeah, yeah, that took us back. So yeah, definitely think like a camper. You won't yep. find me camping, but you definitely want to think like a camper because that happens. Because I was in Texas when they tried to kill us with the freeze. <laughs> that little and so from then on, I am prepared. I am yep. overly prepared for those type of situations. We, so, we were fortunate. El Paso's on a separate power grid, uh, but I don't brag about that too much because next this winter may be our turn. Yeah, I yeah, because it was it made me a stronger person. Let's just say it built character. Yep. It was a character building experience <laughs> for me at that time. But um let's definitely those were some great tips and I wanted to do that because we see the same old tips all the time and it gets blah. And I think sometimes, you know, they, you just kind of pass them over. But when uh, Delmont was talking about the tips and he's been in trucking since before forever, and he's not older at all. <laughs> he's not even my age. But the point is he's been, um, that's really been his only job. And he's been in truck for a long time and he was talking about things that we just really don't normally talk about when we talk about safety for the drivers but it just comes second nature to him because he's been driving for a while he was a fleet manager and an operations manager so it's stuff that he's told his staff and now he's back a driver enjoying life again so there we go um but let's go ahead go to commercial and come back and talk about the great fuel program that you guys have at MVT. Hello everybody, I'm DeAnthony Davis. I'm a truck driver from Cleveland, Texas. I've been driving for three and a half years now. I recently saw a podcast with Rig on Wheels on YouTube. I gave them a call. They, they was fast, they was efficient, they helped me out. I didn't really want to be able to roll, so they got me a good regional job. And uh, hey, you should give them a call. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back. Okay, so Pearson is about to tell you about their wonderful fuel um, efficiency program. It is really, really good. But I normally say this at the end of his speech, but this is probably the better part of it. And we wrote it up in a blog. It's the fact that they kind of coach about it to get the drivers to actually be able to get the program, get the car, get the $25,000. It's not just, oh, we have this for you, but we don't try to help you get to the goal. So they're actually coaching and working with the driver. That is better than anything. It's not just a carrot that you can't catch. So take it away, Pearson. Isn't that what they say on the game show? Oh, absolutely here. I just need to, you know, drop the Plinko chip. Um, hey, yeah, we have, uh, look, uh, fuel economy is a big thing in our industry right now. Freight is not what it was this time last year. All companies need to save money. You'll see a lot of the public companies, they're going to go ahead and release their fourth quarter earnings statements. And you'll see a lot of these companies are down 15, 20% versus where they were last year. We're not going backwards on driver pay. 
we aren't going backwards on equipment. We're not going backwards in a lot of things here. We're going to keep on keeping on. But the one area we can save money, that we can make that difference up in what we're facing as an industry is fuel economy, both us and the drivers. It's a partnership in doing that. We believe in fuel economy. So in an industry that averages about 6.5 miles a gallon, we're averaging about 9, 9.5 miles a gallon have several people averaging in the double digits in terms of their fuel economy on miles per gallon. It's not luck. The biggest factor of that is driver behaviors on the road. It's pre-planning. It's understanding how to get the most out of your equipment. It's the lanes that you run. It's time of day that you go through a certain market, like as an example, avoiding Houston, Texas during the rush hour periods. Um, and we do that and we want to recognize the drivers. We have uh, certain perks and productivity bonuses that we do. But the biggest piece of this with our, refer with our uh, MPGs comes down to the fact that whoever gets the best miles per gallon for a quarter, we are going to give a brand new car. Uh, last quarter was a 2023 Sonata. It will be again this quarter, but it's going to be a, a brand new car. We give it to the person with the best MPG. It's extremely competitive amongst our 1,900 drivers to see who's going to be the best. Um, last quarter, the person that won it had been with us a while. The quarter before that, the person had just barely been with us less than a year. Um, all divisions are eligible for it. If you're assigned a truck, you're eligible for this bonus. Um, uh, so what we do is a brand new car every quarter. It's given at our driver appreciation event that we do at the middle of the following quarter. Additionally, if you get the best fuel economy for the year, you're going to get a $25,000 bonus. If you don't get the best fuel economy in a quarter, don't worry. You're still eligible, eligible for the yearly, uh, yearly giveaway of the $25,000. The other part of this is let's say that, you know, you didn't have a bad quarter, but you averaged about eight miles a gallon. We have a department called driver services, and the sole function of driver services is an investment in you, not just from a fuel economy standpoint, but a safety standpoint, and helping you with any career advancement goals that you have within Mesilla Valley Transportation. But one of the things they work on specifically is if you come to driver services and go, look, I'm at it about eight. I want to compete. I want to have a chance at that brand new car. We're going to work with you. We're going to look at your equipment. We're going to get into the computer part of this thing to find out is your equipment operating as efficiently as it possibly can be. We're going to get into you. Are you hard braking? How often do you get off and on the road? How often do you accelerate hard brake? How often uh, are you maybe needing to redo your pre-planning on when you operate the vehicle? Uh, driver services will work with you hand in hand to get the absolute most out of the vehicle it benefits you and it benefits us uh, and so it's one of the things that makes Messiah valley transportation unique to many other companies is it's competitive with the drivers but we want you to be successful we want you to be successful on your fuel economy along with your overall career development plans and so we work very closely with you to hit that goal and hopefully you're coming home with a brand new car generally your spouse if they have any questions about what you do for a living that tends to go away when you have a brand new car in the driveway with a big bow on it it just generally helps the conversation move along that really will that'll help the conversation that or the twenty five thousand dollars extra yes at the end of yep. the day, that, that definitely will help it um move it right along but i like putting your money where your mouth is with the entire career development because of course we all know companies out there that say the whole career development but what are they actually doing so to talk about that is something that's given away so often that's pretty remarkable I, it's crazy every week to talk about it because I still can't believe that. I, I think the career development piece of this equation is the bigger challenge of it. Most jobs that you get in the trucking industry, look, 10, 20 years from now, if you just stay with that company, you're going to be doing the same thing. They may give you a jacket when you hit your million safe miles. They may give you a pen and all that's important. But what do you want out of your career? And so we want to work with you on that career development path. You may move into operations. We have a number of fleet managers that started with us as truck drivers. You may want to become a driver trainer. We have a lot of driver trainers making hundred to $150,000 a year training the next, next generation of drivers, but they started out as just a truck driver on a division with us several years ago. Uh, you may become, you want a road tester or an orientation presenter, orientation manager. You may determine, hey, you know what? I want to do online college while I drive a truck and I want to go into a more of a, an advanced management career. Uh, 
you will find an MVT. We have a lot of current CDL holders throughout our organization that aren't in the truck. They just work in the company. So part of this is looking at your career development path. Do you want to be a truck driver or do you want to be the best truck driver you can be? And I, I would advise anybody, we talked about it at the very beginning of this episode. Are you a professional on the road or you just kind of killing time trying to make some money? There's nothing wrong with making money. We all got bills to pay unless you're independently wealthy, which if you are, this is a cool hobby for you. But if you're not independently wealthy, you want to squeeze the most out of your career. You only have so much time in your career. And boy, if I'm on the road, I want to get the most out of it. So part of that comes from you and us investing into you as much as we possibly can. Love it, love it, love it. I don't want to run out of time, so I want to go to our next commercial. But I want it to be the commercial with that very tall human um, that is in the um, MBT truck that's showing um, all of the intricate parts of the truck and everything. And then come back and Pierce and I, you know, you kind of talk about the truck um, and all, but to the fact that all the trucks are set up for teams. So it's not where anybody will be, I don't even know the word, uh, but anyway, it's not a small area, <laughs> but it's a word. It's a, it's a it's a stand-up sleeper. It's not a mid-roof. You have a stand-up sleeper, 71 inch in length, so you can move around. If you, Theoretically, if you wanted to frolic or skip in the truck, it'd be unusual and you'd get stairs at the truck stop, but you could. Yeah, no frolicking in the truck, but <laughs> no stairs or anything like that. But yeah, it, it's a uh, large truck. So Kayla, let's go ahead and put that one on uh, when we're talking about the truck. Would you please? At Mesilla Valley Transportation, every driver is behind the wheel of a late model International LT, a truck that takes comfort, convenience, and safety to a whole new level. Join us as we explore the impressive features of this powerhouse on wheels. The open road is full of surprises, and sometimes that includes unexpected encounters with wildlife. But worry not, the International LT has you covered. The front end protection guard offers an extra layer of defense, protecting you from animal strikes. Drive with confidence knowing that you're shielded from the unexpected. We all know how important it is to keep our batteries charged. And our International LTs have your back. The Cummins X15 is equipped with an auto start feature, ensuring that your batteries are automatically recharged when they run low on volts. It's a seamless process that keeps you powered up and ready to hit the road. Disc brakes and an engine brake provide reliable and safe stopping power when you need it most. You can have peace of mind knowing that you're in control. Safety is at the forefront of what we do. Our international LTs are equipped with top-of-the-line safety features to ensure your well-being while out on the road. These tractors are equipped with Bendix fusion protection, collision mitigation, and lane departure warning. Achieving good fuel efficiency deserves recognition. With the international LT, your efforts don't go unnoticed. When you consistently achieve impressive miles per gallon, the international LT rewards you with increased speed. It's a little extra motivation to keep you pushing for better fuel economy. After a long drive, you're ready for a well-deserved break. With the International LT, you can enjoy your rest period in absolute comfort. Thanks to its auxiliary power unit, you can keep the driver's cabin heated or cooled just the way you like it. No matter the weather outside, you'll always find your sweet spot within our International LT. The International LT understands that comfort extends beyond driving. It's a space where you can truly feel at home. I'm a big guy and I have room to move around in here. With plenty of room to spare, the International LT accommodates even the tallest drivers. And there's ample storage for all your clothes, cooking essentials, and tools, making life on the road even more convenient. Speaking of cooking, bring along your appliances and don't sacrifice any luxuries thanks to all of our International LTs being equipped with built-in inverters. Dry your hair, make a smoothie, or play a game, all from the comfort of your truck. We take pride in our well-maintained fleet. And if by chance you do come across something wrong on your truck, you're never far from help, thanks to our valuable relationship with Penske. With more than 750 brick and mortar Penske shops nationwide, their expert team is always ready to assist you. From routine maintenance to unexpected repairs, they'll get you taken care of and back on the road in no time. And there you have it. Just a few things about this late model international LT that make MBT the place to be. 
Awesome. Welcome. Welcome back. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about the chalk or what you think. Well, the Penske, that's, that's a yeah. huge point right there that makes MVT the place to be is because of the partnership with Penske, in my opinion. Yeah. It's, a, it's another, it's an, it's another advantage of the engineered lanes. Um, so we go to the same locations over and over and over again. And th there's some strategic advantages that not just only as us as a company, but as you as a driver that get out of that. A, out of El Paso, out of um, uh, Laredo, Denver, we're able to use our own biodiesel, which we get better fuel economy out of that biodiesel. But more importantly, across our entire network, God forbid, if you have something go wrong with the truck, Penske can get to you quickly. They have fiduciary interests in getting to you quickly. In fact, it costs them a lot if they don't. And if a replacement truck is needed, that replacement truck's available. Let's say that you like the truck that you're in, but something's gone wrong and you need a loaner truck. When you come back through the loop that you're on, you're able to get that original truck back that you originally had so that you're comfortable in the vehicle that you're in. Um, most importantly, we aren't going to have you sitting at a shop waiting on a two to three day repair, though. You're going to keep moving forward. Most drivers look at any company. There's times where you have to pay detention time or layover pay or something along those lines, uh, breakdown pay. But ideally, you want to keep running miles. And so that allows you to do that. So that relationship with Penske becomes really important in that equation. The second part of it, it's, it's low miles on the trucks. We are in the process of getting rid of all of our 2019s. We're down to a handful left, so it's mainly 2020 and newers. Um, Well-maintained vehicles, uh, you're getting a truck that has been detailed, so when you leave orientation, you're getting a detailed, newer piece of equipment to get out on the road on and have success with immediately. Uh, you get a chance to walk through with Penske and go over the truck. So when they say it's detailed, you don't go out to the back of an alley somewhere and find the truck and hopefully it works. You're going out with a Penske rep and you're going piece by piece by piece by piece. Because their goal is when that truck leaves, if you were to get a level three inspection at a DOT way scale, you'd pass it with blind, uh, flying colors. We want you to be able to go through a critique from any DOT officer and not have to worry, am I going to fail this inspection today? Um, and so you're getting a reliable piece of equipment that's really built for an OTR team that's out on the road for weeks at a time, but you're not going to be out for weeks at a time because even though you may only be out, in, depending on your division, three days up to seven days, uh, we want you to be comfortable as though you live in the truck because you're still spending a lot of time in that truck. You should be comfortable. You shouldn't have to be claustrophobic. You should enjoy the vehicle that you're in, feel comfortable and feel like it's your home away from home. You can't duplicate the home experience, but this comes close to it by letting you have some space to move around, have a clean interior, clean exterior, and enjoy what you're driving compared to being put in a vehicle that you either feel unsafe with or, quite, quite frankly, after a while, closed in on. Absolutely. I just like the fact that they can move around in the truck. That's yep. huge. Cause Get so many drivers talking about, you know, the truck that they're assigned at different carriers is just they can't or it's old equipment and things like that. So that's great. I, I always great. think about that when I see the car haulers going down the road with that mid roof because they got a car right on top of them. Um, mm -hmm. I look at that and it, it reminds me of a moving, uh, moving Hertz. Uh, it just looks claustrophobic as I'll get out. I just cannot. I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody, enjoy your Halloween. Enjoy your candy, your movie night, your family night with your family and all of that good stuff. Um, but definitely enjoy your candy. Um, if you are looking for a job, give us a call at 281 968-3100, or rig on wheel, go to the website at rigonwheels.com and fill out the Intella app. And then also follow us on all the social medias and um, especially on YouTube because we definitely stream live there as well. Did you have something else you wanted to say, Pearson? No, I think you covered it all. I try. I try. <laughs> all right, guys. See you all next week on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, 
Bye-bye.